So today I want to tell you about four acts of vandalism and how the media and the cultural elites treated them. Now please, let me clarify from the outset. We, we campaign on a lot of things, but we don't endorse vandalism. No matter how much we may agree or disagree with the protesters, our strategy has always been to inform and to protest through official channels and promoting good legislation and educating and empowering parents. That's where we're at. You may agree or disagree with that. But let me tell you about four recent acts of vandalism. Three were sort of acceptable and one was even lauded by some politicians. But one was very, very, very bad. Yet they were all four acts of vandalism. See if you can figure out which one was very, very, very bad. So according to a One News report two weeks before Christmas, about a dozen protesters walked into Te Papa at about midday. Their target, a wooden panel of the English version of the Treaty of Waitangi. They painted over the third article, a removal of what they say is a translation that misleads and perpetuates a dangerous lie. Yeah, and uh, you'll... Uh you can't actually see just in that shot, but the police were present and only one section of the treaty was painted over in that shot. But in the end, all three were. So they continued doing it even while the police were there. And you'll also note that there were four directly involved in the damage. Uh, here's another shot of what happened. Yep, broad, de broad daylight. They did this. And three of the fend offenders were on bail at the time. That bail thing seems to work really well, eh? Police arrested 12 people. Two were charged with the damage, just two, even though the footage explicitly shows three to four damaging it. Uh, two were charged for breaching their bail, and the other eight were just escorted outside into the warm sunshine of a summer's day and released without charge. How nice. Uh, and the museum display shows English and Tareo Māori versions of the treaty with the information panels highlighting the differences. And the Te Papa co-leaders said, quote, the purpose of this exhibition is to provide space for conversations about the treaty and it needs to change to meet the needs of today. They noted that to do this work properly, which would include having conversations with various communities, would take time. And one of the co-leaders acknowledged the message that had been conveyed through the protest action. We have heard the message of this protest action, and we have heard the many and varied responses to it. Now, the Green Party was very warm and affirming about what the protesters had done. They even had a group photo in front of it. Marama Davidson there on the left. I'm just wondering if it was cis white males who did this act of violence and Chloe Schwarbrick on the right. In fact, Chloe was very positive about the vandalism because of the sanitization of protests and movements. She said they've tried to express themselves. Have a watch. Uh, look, i got to say, as we look back at the arc of history, I think that we have a tendency to sanitise protests and to sanitise movements for justice and to sanitise what ends up becoming uh, the mainstream understanding of what has occurred. So to that effect, I think that the core uh, substance and purpose of what those protesters were undertaking is obviously something that they truly believed in and is something which they themselves have expressed they tried to get outcomes on through trying to engage with Papa in a number of different ways. Ah, yes, they simply tried to express themselves. Uh, now, let me tell you about the second act of vandalism. Um, according to a report in Stuff, it said this, a roundabout in Mount Monganui painted as a yellow smiley face had to be repainted after it was defaced. Vandals sprayed red paint over its eyes. In March, we had a very good CCTV footage of the vandalism occurring and are considering the best course of action, according to the council. As yet, we haven't contacted police. The roundabout smile has now been restored, but its original tongue removed due to our preference and feedback from the community. The, the smiley face emoji with tongue is typically used to indicate fun, sass or sexual arousal. In, about, in another about face, tourists and locals will no longer get a head spin from the landmark. 
the council now has rotated the roundabout smile 180 degrees so that it's smiling up at people enjoying a walk or climbing Mount Monganui, he said. What a lovely story. No police presence in paddy wagons, no arrests, no comments about it being embarrassing by Chloe Schraubrick, no live crosses from One News or News Hub. But you know what? We must stand up against hate. People who smile are welcome in Mount Monganui. I mean, I have children who smile. I smile. Ignorance and hateful views do not give people an excuse to erase our smiles. Let people be who they are in peace. Please smile to the person next to you. It matters. And uh, so on to our next one, our third act of vandalism. And according to Radio New Zealand Report, Prime Minister Christopher Luxon's electorate office was vandalised for the third time in less than six months. Just recently, footage taken in East Auckland's botany on uh, a couple of weeks ago shows the word grant the visas painted on the walls of Luxon's office in black. An image of Luxon had also been targeted with a moustache and hair drawn on it. A spokesperson for Luxon said they were aware of the damage and it was a matter for police. Now, it's not the first time Luxon's office has been targeted with red paint splashed on the walls in November. Uh, there we are, there's some more. And then again in February, where the words Free Palestine uh, could be seen, a pro-Palestinian group, Tamaki for Palestine, said it applauds vandals who attacked a number of national politicians' offices and the US Embassy and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade Office in Auckland. Uh, John Minto, the uh, national chair of Palestine's Solidarity Network, Aotearoa, said it was an effective way to get a point across. It's just a minor inconvenience. Yep, so uh, there we go. No paddy, no police presence, no paddy wagons, no comments about it being embarrassing by Chloe Schraubrick. And once again, no live crosses from One News or News Hub. Uh, and finally, on to our fourth piece of vandalism, and it was the Rainbow Crossing in enough. Gisborne. Our mayor won't listen to us, our councillors won't listen. So yeah, sometimes you gotta do things for people to listen in. Eh? We don't want these um these transgender rainbow coming in to teach our children. We are parents. They don't need to be taught. Yes. So yeah, there we know. go, and it was uh, painted and protested drag queens reading in libraries and the sexualization of children. Now the next day, hordes of police turned up to guard the crossing with a paddy wagon. Apparently there was no other crime in Gisborne that day. This crossing was serious criminal business. Have you called the police recently regarding a theft or vandalism? How was the response? I mean, I know a business that's been waiting more than seven days, uh, and they even have video surveillance of the crime being committed. And then the next day, uh, there was a similar, so I guess you could say we're talking about five, but the fourth and the fifth one sort of tie in together. But the next day, the crossing in K Road, Auckland, sort of the red light district, as we all know, was painted over. And this led to a massive police hunt the next day and dramatic coverage of a crime. Now, let me just play the report from my news. It sounds like the Queen had died or the President had been shot. This was serious news reporting. Listen to how dramatic the report is. Uh, and you'll also hear how Chloe responded. Now, I think we, you might be thinking she'll say, look, we've sanitised their protests and movements. They've tried to express themselves like those Te Papa ones. Did she say that? Uh, yeah, right. Well, let's have a watch. This is dramatic stuff. Police are calling a paint attack on a central Auckland rainbow crossing a hate crime. It's the second in a week to be hit by vandals. Again, it was painted over, but this time it's not yet clear by whom. The damage bill's set to be thousands of dollars. Kim Baker Wilson reports. The rainbow hues looking worse for wear. Overnight, smothered in paint. Another <sighs> rainbow crossing targeted and vandalised. Oh. Earlier this week, it was Gisborne. Destiny Church members painting over the town's crossing. It was painted rainbow again. We have the right to protest. And then, several arrests 
After protesters returned, police say in Auckland it was three people pouring the paint, their faces covered, their number plate hidden. Now no. the police appeal to find out who they are. Who this they paint are. attack and this crossing in the heart of Auckland's rainbow community. <sighs> And we'll clean up the splash of paint. And I think that those uh, antagonists can expect to see that the love, the support, and the celebration for our community will return tenfold. Ah, uh, yes. How lovely. Uh, that's Auckland Central MP and Green Party co-leader Chloe Shawbrick, and she hit out at whoever vandalised the Rainbow Pride crossing, saying it's frankly embarrassing and urging them just to stop it. Uh, she also said, all I can really see here is a sad, bizarre and petty use of energy. So, um, Chloe, let me just get this right. Protests are okay, but only if you and the Greens agree with it and have your photo taken in front of it. Now, police say they've been investigating the rainbow vandalism as a hate crime. Uh, according to the New Zealand Herald, three of the Gisborne protesters have been charged with graffiti vandalism. And the area commander said, we consider that on the face of it, the alleged offending is consistent with a hate crime. And we will seek to establish that as fact during the ongoing investigations. This incident has caused concern for many people in our diverse community and acts like this have no place here. Freedom of speech and the right to protest are fundamental principles of a free and democratic society under the rule of law. Sadly, a line has been crossed on this occasion, end quote. So, to Papa isn't a hate crime. The smiley face isn't a hate crime. Trashing the PM's office repeatedly isn't a hate crime. But painting an LGBT symbol is. Now, there's two problems with what the police are saying. Firstly, let's have a look at the definition of a hate crime according to the police website. There are currently no specific offences called hate crime in New Zealand law. And for a hate crime to have occurred, hate motivated crime to have occurred, there are two things that must have happened. A crime must have been committed, for example, assault, damage to property or threatening behaviour. Okay, so tick. A reason the crime was committed is because of hate, bias or prejudice towards the victims, the victims, race, religion, gender, sexuality, disability, age or any other part of their identity. Keyword. Victim. Is a pedestrian crossing a victim? Did it need a hug? And it's not owned by anyone. It's virtue signalling by woke councils. It's not a hate crime. Here's the other problem. According to the NZ Transport Agency, Waka Kotahi, here's the most recent gazetted requirements for new crossings, and they apply from 2021 onwards and existing crossings. Uh, let me show you. This is what a crossing should look like. What do you notice there, down the bottom? White. Not red or orange or yellow or blue or green or purple. Nope. White. Uh, so, there's a slight problem here with what the police are saying. And it's interesting because the Gisborne and the K-Road multicoloured ones are actually illegal anyway. Anyway, But, you know, look, don't tell the police. Interestingly enough, back in 2019, a rainbow crossing was painted after Wellington City Council signed off on the, on the idea in a quest for the capital to be more deliberately LGBTQI friendly. Now, the Transport Authority gave formal notification it prohibited the installation of the crossing, and that should it proceed, the agency would ask police to prevent the installation and remove the markings. The agency supports the celebration of LGBT diversity, but not at the expense of road safety. Uh, the draft letter and related emails showed that NZTA found the crossing to be in breach of the land transport rules. OK, and of course, there's the land transport rules. Now, the letter outlined how the rainbow crossing could be confusing for motorists and pedestrians determining right of way because it looked like a pedestrian crossing, they said there's a high risk of confusion and a dazzling and distracted effect. Uh, and the letter also said marking the road to celebrate LGBTQI diversity conflicted with another one of the rules which prohibited markings intended to be used for advertising or other purposes not connected with the use of the road, which is why you don't see 
advertising on roads all around the country. Oh, except just this one. Now, here's the key bit. The, the council made uh, minor adjustments, but went ahead anyway. In other words, the council flouted the law. Did the police prosecute? Did they call it a hate crime? Nope, it's one law for some and another law for others. So the police say about the LGBT vandalism, sadly, a line has been crossed on this occasion. No line at Tapapa, let's have a conversation. No line for damaging National Party and public service officers, it's just a minor inconvenience. Not even interested in the smiley face, but a line is crossed for a rainbow crossing. None of them were a hate crime, except the rainbow ones. Now, just one interesting thing to conclude. A couple of years ago in the UK, there was a big hoo-ha about those woke crossings. According to the Daily Mail at the time, it said a new zebra crossing in the colours of the trans flag has been blasted as dangerous after safety concerns have been raised about similar colourful crossings in London. Guide dogs and police horses are understood to be confused by the colourful designs with the latest one in Camden. One man asked whether the council's desire to flaunt their woke credentials was more important than disabled people's safety. Uh, and have a watch of this. The horses don't like it. Mounted police force. Oh, they don't like the colour. They don't like the colour. <laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, classic. Um, perhaps that's why the police in Gisborne didn't arrive on horseback. The, look, let's sum it up. The Rainbow Crossing is the new holy grail of our culture, even though it's a fake version of the real rainbow. Sadly, the police will continue to lose respect and credibility when they buy into this cultural issue and apply the law inconsistently or not even enforce it. And politicians like Chloe and the Greens show the danger of so-called hate speech and hate crimes. They're based on not all so-called hate speech, but just speech and crimes they hate. Be warned, Chloe's hypocrisy shown to you in this episode is perfect evidence of just how the left operate with these issues. Mm -hmm.